tens. Um, we're now in part number two where we're going to look at the human karyotypes. So now you've learned about the DNA structure. Now let's look at chromosomes again and see what they look like. Could you actually take a picture of a chromosome? You can. Okay, and so you can see down below in this diagram right here, we have something called a karyotype, and a karyotype is simply a photograph of humans and human chromosomes that are inside of the nucleus. Okay, so what do you notice? You notice that humans have 46 chromosomes. Okay, that's a good number to remember. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And here's how it works. You actually have two of each number chromosome, okay? You have two chromosome number ones, you have two chromosome number twos, two chromosome number threes, and can you see all the way down into the 23rd pair, and that, that represents the sex chromosomes, okay? So I'll get to that in just a second. Where do these chromosomes come from? Well, this homologous pair of chromosomes, so for example, the two chromosome number twos, let's say you have one chromosome number two and you have another chromosome number two. Because this is chromosome number two, the same information on one chromosome is also on the other chromosome. Now, when I say same information, I mean maybe this part of the chromosome gives the information for how tall you're going to be, okay? This chromosome number two also has the information for how tall you're going to be in the same spot. But guess what? You have two chromosome number twos. One came from your mother and one came from your father, or one came from the egg that made you and one came from the sperm that made you. So that's why how tall you're going to be is dependent upon the information from the egg and the information from the sperm. And then you, it works itself out to figure out what the height of this individual is going to be. Okay, does that make sense? So you have two chromosome number ones. One came from your mother and one came from your father. All the way down the list. Now, have a look at the very bottom right here. Okay, chromosome X and Y. Well, you got one from the mother and one from the father. So if this person whose photograph it is of their DNA has two X chromosomes, do you know if that means that this person is a female or a male? Two X chromosomes mean that you are a girl. And if you have one X and one Y that you can see down at the bottom down here, that that means that person is a male. Okay, so those sex chromosomes are the only ones that are a little bit different than all of the others. So you can think your way through this, and we'll talk about this in grade 11 biology, but does it make sense that I say the sex of a baby is determined by the father? Because the sperm will always only have a Y chromosome or an X chromosome, and so that sperm either brings the X chromosome when it meets an egg to fertilize the egg, or half of the sperm have a Y chromosome. So when you get an egg fertilized with a sperm, you will end up with that 23rd pair as either two X's or an X and a Y, okay? So that's the last bit right there. Every single cell in your body has 46 chromosomes except for those sex cells because gametes, which are eggs and sperms, have to have only 23. Now, I know this is a lot of information to go through in grade 10, but it makes sense to talk about it now because we're talking about your nucleus, we're talking about the DNA, and we're talking about what does that mean. If we're talking about building proteins and building stuff, it's important to talk about what that stuff looks like, and it's important to talk about where that information comes from, okay? All right, next part of this is looking at that DNA molecule and then now doing something to it. So we're going to take the DNA and we're going to do what we call decoding the DNA, all right? In the nucleus, it is the DNA, which is the double-stranded deoxyribonucleic acid, 
your DNA runs anti-parallel. And don't have to really worry about that. That's just something for grade 11 to talk about. But it just means you've got a double strand of DNA. Okay? A portion of that DNA that's inside of your nucleus is what we call a coding strand. Essentially, your DNA is not going to leave the cell to find a ribosome to do the making of the proteins, but how does it get the information from inside the DNA to a ribosome where the proteins get made? Well, it makes a copy of the information, okay? So, only small portions, here I'm reading right here, with specific instructions to build a protein are read. Your cell doesn't do things that it doesn't need to. It wants to save energy. So it only makes the things it needs to make at that particular time. So therefore, it doesn't copy the entire DNA to make only a little recipe. It's like taking an entire recipe book. You don't need the entire recipe book to make just the chocolate cake. You need just the instructions from the chocolate cake to make the chocolate cake. So you don't need to copy out the entire recipe book. Same idea here. Okay, so what your cell does is only a small portion of those specific instructions to make a protein are read. The portion of that DNA that is coded for a particular protein is called a gene. So inside the nucleus, when it produces an instruction, that's in the form of what we call mRNA. The M stands for messenger. Okay, so take a minute, jot down a couple of things, key terms, mRNA. So the DNA stays in the nucleus, and then the message that it makes, you notice it's only a single little strand here. It takes that single little strand, leaves the cell, and finds a ribosome. The process by which you take the gene in the DNA and write a code in mRNA is called transcription. Okay, it's transcribing the message into a message that can then leave the cell. Okay, this is the homework you're going to do. It's kind of fun. You're going to take the code of those nucleotides in the form of A's and T's and C's and G's, and you're going to write out what the message is or transcribe it into a one-line message of messenger RNA. Next step then this is very complex, but what's going to happen is the mRNA sneaks out of the nucleus, goes to find a ribosome, and then the ribosome reads the cord. It's just like a piece of ticker tape, like a piece of tape going right through the ribosome. And every three parts, every three little nucleotide message pieces that you have get translated into the building blocks that make a protein. Okay, so here we go. AUG that's on your mRNA came from the message in the DNA. Once you've got AUG, the ribosome says, ooh, AUG means bring me the piece that makes methionine. Okay, that translates AUG into the amino acid methionine. And then methionine gets attached to the next one. So then the next three sequences you would read as this codon right here, C, G, G. And the ribosome says, ooh, C, G, G is the message that says bring the amino acid arginine. And it attaches it to the methionine. And then it builds and builds and builds and builds. So this is how the cell takes the message in your genetic code, makes it into a message that can leave the nucleus, find a ribosome, and then translate it into the amino acids that are the building blocks for a protein. Okay, are you with me? That's a big step, okay? How does that work? What does that look like? Okay. Here's a picture right here. Can you see that mRNA goes through a ribosome? So remember from the previous lesson you learned that the organelle that's a ribosome is a protein building factory. This is what we mean. We mean that as it goes through, 
your cell will take each of these three little codons, so here's one right here, AGU means bring an amino acid and stick it to the next one in the chain so that the code translates it into a perfectly built protein molecule and then that molecule is going to turn into something like it's going to become an enzyme okay and help your food to break down or an enzyme that does another role within the cell maybe makes the DNA help it to replicate itself maybe that protein molecule that gets built is a hormone molecule so it's a chemical message that gets transported from one part of a cell to another so it's a really really interesting process we know a lot about how this process works and so in grade 10 we just want to learn two things the DNA is code to make stuff what kind of stuff it's usually a protein okay so these proteins that your body makes aren't the same proteins that you're eating when you're eating your lunch right you talk about eating protein what do what do I mean by that right like what are the sample foods that make up proteins you're probably thinking well I know that milk has protein in it I know that chicken has protein in it beef has protein lentils okay etc well when you eat those protein molecules they're huge your digestive system breaks them down. They break them down into these teeny little dots right here, amino acids. They travel in your bloodstream to your cells. They're just floating around. And then when your body needs to build proteins that your body makes, it takes these amino acids and put them together in the particular way that actually can be a useful molecule for, it, for the cell, okay? So the protein that you eat in your chicken can end up being a hormone molecule called serotonin. It breaks it down and your cell needs to build it up. All right. And so that takes place in the organelles, specifically the nucleus, because you need the DNA. And then it heads to the ribosome once you've got the messenger RNA and then it actually does the building of a protein. You can use this little codon chart right down here, this little circle diagram. You read it from the inside out, and from the inside out, you get the three little letters. So I'll show you how you read this. If the codon on your mRNA says AUG, you start down here in your codon um, building chart, and you take A, so you start in the center, the second one was a U, and the third one was a G. So the code AUG is code for the amino acid called methionine. Do you want to try one more? How about arginine? Let's see. I take the codon CGG. So let's go down to the codon chart. I take C, and then G, and then G, and that translates into the amino acid called arginine and then they stick together stick together stick together they fold all up and now you've got a big protein molecule that your cell needs okay all right I'm gonna let you fill um, complete this little note right here you can fill it in using mine on the solution set okay see if you get it I'm gonna watch we're gonna watch a couple little videos and then for the homework part, you're going to be working through the protein sequence. And I'll make another little video to show you how to do this again. Okay, good luck.